Okay, welcome to this week's PHP tutorial. Um, in this series we are going to be creating a user login and registration system. Um, so this will be some wait now these work really. Uh, like on my website where you see um, like a login box, I'm going to create that. Now obviously it won't be a sort of full user system, there won't be any control panel or whatever you get after you've logged in. It's just going to be literally welcome you have logged in. Um, so in this video I'm just going to briefly demonstrate that. Oh, by the way, I should just quickly mention I've got a bit of a cold, so um, you might be able to sort of tell. So nothing I can do about it. You just have to put up with my slightly more ridiculous than normal voice. Um, oh, and I've also decided, quick announcement, I suppose this is, that I'm also going to be calling th these introductions part zero, and I'll be referring to the first part of the code as part one. So I think that's what I've done so far, but I've decided now. So that's also a little bit strange, but you have to put up with that as well. Anyway, um, so yeah, in this video I'm going to briefly demonstrate um, the system. Uh, basically what it's going to be is these four pages here. Um, this one isn't really part of the system, that's just to sort of mimic the website that you're protecting with the password login system thingy. So there's only going to be one line of code that we're going to add to that. Um, the entire login system is going to be controlled by the init file, which we have used before. So that is going to decide if the user needs to be logged in to view the page they're trying to access. Um, and if, if they do need to be logged in, they're going to, redir going to get redirected to this login page, which will be just, just be a basic login form. Um, Logout is obviously just a very simple, like four lines of PHP um, that logs out the user. And register is a registration page. Um, these two pages are the main ones we're going to be concentrating, concentrating on, login and register. Um, both of them will have to do quite a bit of sort of error checking and stuff like that, but I'll demonstrate that as we go along. So if I just try and browse to protected, you see we get redirected to login.php, um, and this is our login page. Basically, it prompts you for your username and password, as you can see here, um, and it also has a little message saying "need an account, register here," which if you click that, you get redirected to the register page. Quite an important point is that the register and login page do not require you to be logged in to view them. So um, the way it's set up at the moment, set up at the moment, is that the init.ink.php file is included in all of these files um, because it always is. You know, it sets up a session, it includes the library files, opens the database connection, that sort of thing. You know, we've talked about that before, um, and that that file includes a list of exceptions stored in as an array. And if the current page is in that array, then um, the login is not requested. Um, so yeah, that's how we're going to do that. Uh, so let's just demonstrate uh, registering. What we're going to do is register an account. When the user registers, they are automatically logged in, so we'll be re redirected to protected. Uh, and then I'm going to log out, and then just log in with that user to demonstrate the login page. So if we just go to register, uh, oh, actually, I'll demonstrate the error error checking as we go along. If I just hit register, leaving all the fields empty, you see we get these two messages saying the username can't be empty and also the password can't be empty. If I enter a username but not a password, you see we just get the password message. Um, the reason we have these two fields here is because uh, because when you type in this box like so, um, you can't actually see what you're typing. You just get these circles or stars if you're using Windows 98, which you better not be. Um, oh, just noticed I've got a HTML error down here. Uh, I imagine I've spelt an ID wrong in these label tags, but I will fix that as we get to the code in the tutorial. Um, anyway, uh, you see you don't get these, you, I mean you don't get the actual characters, you just get these circles. It's like a security thing, rather boring. Um, but basically, say if you were typing in your password and you made a typo, like you press the wrong key by mistake, then when you got to the uh, when you logged out and went to log back in, you wouldn't be able to because your password would be the one that you didn't type. If that makes sense. It wouldn't be what you tried to type. Um, so if I enter this different to this, like say if I just do numbers. Now, oh, by the way, I typed typing in here in case anyone was wondering. And this was one two three four. If I hit register. You see we get password verification failed, which comes up if this doesn't match this. Um, the last thing that we check on this page is if the username already exists. So in the database at the moment, I have my name, spelt right, no, 
See, my password's been remembered. Just remove that. If I hit register now, you see we get the username you entered is already taken. Um, that's just because I'll show you in the database. Um, my use my name is here. So are these ones. Yeah. Um, so let's register a, a, a name that doesn't exist. Let's just say test, test, and test. See now we get redirected to get rid of this. See now we get redirected to protected.php, which is our protected page. And all that does is tell us who we're logged in as. So you are logged in as test, which is the username. Uh, you can reload this page as many times as you like. Um, you can sort of navigate away from it, and come back. You don't get prompted for login again. Um, so yeah, that's that. You can set the activity time, the act, um, inactivity time even, of the um, sort of login period. So. How long between page views do you want the user to stay logged in as? You can you do that. Um, I'll talk about that at the end. So sort of when I'm wrapping up or whatever it is. So let's demonstrate logging out. Oh, actually, I should add a link to the protected page to the logout page, shouldn't I? That would be very sensible. Anyway. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, so if you see here now, protected, we are logged in as test. If I go to log out, uh, this logs out. It uh, removes our information from the session, we all, which is actually how we're going to be saving the username, which is what we displayed there. Um, so this tutorial is basically on the session, so that's the sort of purpose of it. Anyway, I have a basics video on the session. If you don't know what the session is for, I recommend you go and watch that. Uh, so yeah, this is the login page. If I go back to, so yeah, uh, log out immediately redirects you to log in. Um, probably not the best action in real life, but I just did this for the purpose of purposes of this video, which demonstrate that I have actually been logged out. If I click protected now, you see we get redirected to login. Um, so if we we should be able to, oh actually, I can look check quickly check the database. You see we have had this. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, we have had this uh, username test added to our list of users, uh, and the password has been added. And now you know Phil's password as well. Uh, okay, so that's that. Um, oh, maybe I should briefly mention this is a SHA1 hash. It's not. We're not storing passwords as plain text. This is just a security thing. The reason we do this is um, just to simply just to um, um, mean, so it means that if anyone were to somehow get hold of our database information, they wouldn't be able to get the user's password from this. Like say if we were storing the use uh, the email address and the password, Mr. Hacker could come along and potentially steal the uh, list of emails and passwords, and then um, you know how most people use their same email and password for everything. He could then go to PayPal and try all of those username, uh, those email addresses and password combinations, even if like two percent of the people that registered at our site had PayPal accounts with the same email address. He could still like get tens of thousands of pounds from them before they even notice. So yeah, that's why we do password hashing. Fortunately, there's no way to tell if sites store your passwords in a secure way, but yeah. Uh, anyway, so let's try logging in with the password test and the username, uh, the other way around, sorry, <laughs> username test and the password test. And you see we have been logged in uh, as test. So that is pretty much it for this system. Uh, hopefully you'll join me in part one, which feels odd to say that, but yep, uh, where I will fix the HTML error and code the rest of the site. Okay, so thanks for watching and join me in the next part.